Let's say you want to lend a company some money, not out of the goodness of your heart, but because you want to make a profit. You lend that money by buying bonds, pieces of paper with the amount lent, the runtime and the interest rate on it. They get the money, you get the paper. When the arranged time is passed, you get your money back, plus a little something on top. But no risk, no fun. If that company goes bankrupt, your money is gone for good. So before you lend your money to some business, you really want to find out if it is securely afloat or going under. But how on earth are you gonna do that? Digging through mountains of data, news articles and actually talking to other people? I don't think so. Enter credit rating agencies. Because analyzing financial papers isn't much fun, you just ask the people whose whole business it is to know if a company, and with it your money, is gonna go poof or not. These experts analyze the debt situation of a bond issuer and after running all the numbers, they give it a credit rating. Triple A means your money is safe and C or D means your money is pretty much gone. Because this is such a practical thing to do, rating agencies are the foundation of global finance. Without rating agencies, lenders act pretty much in blind faith. There'd be no way to quickly know how secure a bond is. So either you do all the work by yourself, or you pick the much cheaper and quicker way and just have a look at what rating agencies say. It's what everybody else does anyway. And that gives rating agencies a lot of power. When everybody believes that a low rated bond is junk, nobody wants to buy it. Or at least not with a low interest rate. So the interest rate goes up. The bid on top of what you get repaid grows a little. Downgrading doesn't have to be a big thing, but if a rating falls to anywhere near C, that little bit on top becomes a huge heap. It makes paying back that loan a lot harder. If a rating agency feels like it, it can make a smoothly running business go bankrupt within the blink of an eye. Same for countries. That's why every time an agency downgrades a country's credit rating, it becomes a major news story. But credit ratings aren't as rock solid as people might think. That became painfully clear after the financial crisis of the late aughts. It all revolved around a lot of shoddy mortgages. These were bundled up, repackaged and sold off again. In the eyes of the rating agencies, this repackaging was enough to transform crappy mortgages into really safe investments. Which they weren't. And because everybody trusted in the rating agencies, they believed lead to be gold. Until it turned out that it really wasn't and the whole house of cards collapsed. And that's not the first time rating agencies got it majorly wrong. It seems they only notice the smoke when the house has already burned to the ground. And still, the whole financial sector relies on their work. If credit rating agencies have such an unthinkably high responsibility for the global economy, how could they be so wrong? Before I get to that, let's have a quick look at how a rating comes into existence. A company that needs a rating approaches an agency. They say, rate our company. And the agency says, okay, and gets to work. The data they need for the ratings they get from the applying company. When they're done, the agency awards the company with their rating, and the company pays the agency for its services. And here's the catch. It's through rating fees that agencies make their money. Money that goes from the company to the agency. But if the company gets a bad rating, it might switch to the competition. And rating agencies don't want that. After all, they are for-profit companies that depend on the fees they get for their ratings. Less ratings means less money. So they're really inclined to please their clients. There's something wrong with that. Just imagine school children paying their teachers for giving them grades. If you get bad grades, you just stop paying the teacher and look for another one that might see things differently. What kind of school would that be? Agencies rating the hands that feed them makes for a highly biased assessment. It creates a climate in which the customer truly is king and can influence the outcome of his own evaluation. A while ago things worked differently. Until the 70s credit rating agencies made their money from subscribers who paid to access their data. This system wasn't leaning in favor of the companies since subscribers were the ones in charge and subscribers wanted to know what was really going on. But everything changed, because of the photocopier. It made it possible for subscribers to easily copy the data and give others a free ride. Obviously, the internet made this whole thing even less viable. That's why there's now a mixed system. Companies pay for their own ratings, which are publicly available, and subscribers pay for in-depth information. And there's a good share of money to be made from that. But don't get your hopes up, because the whole market is ruled by three big rating agencies. Standard & Poor's, Moody's and Fitch. The only competition they have are some small fish, and that's no good. When there's no one around to threaten their market shares, those three can basically do what they want and clients would still come back for more. Companies couldn't just stop getting ratings either, because when it comes to ratings, you don't really have a choice. If you want a loan, you absolutely have to get a rating. If you don't, people won't lend you their money. But credit rating agencies are far from perfect. 
They make mistakes, and these mistakes come at a high cost, but that they can influence markets so much that it assures them a co-writer credit for the latest financial drama comes not really through any fault of their own. It's on those who just take the ratings for facts, when they should know that this stuff is much more complicated. Credit ratings come in handy in giving investors a feel for a bond, but even a triple A rating does not ensure that your money is absolutely safe. It might be a good idea to make sure of that yourself. Either the people who juggle millions every day get a good incentive to actually take a closer look at what exactly it is they are buying and selling, or we can already brace ourselves for the next global financial mishap. And that's about it. If you liked this video, feel free to like and share it. If you want to tell me just about anything, please do so in the comments. Thanks for checking in. That's all, peeps.